at the heart of North Yorkshire. Graham Mack. BBC Radio York. I really am enjoying being back in North Yorkshire. Isn't York fab? I mean, we look out of the window, see it. It's like, it's like working in a medieval fort. Obviously, if you're outside and you're looking at BBC Radio York, it's not like that because we look like a branch of Quick Fit. But when you look out from in, it looks great. And, and York, fabulous, unless you're driving. I say driving, but really it's just being sat in your car with the engine running. What is it with the traffic in this city? I saw a bus driver on Gillygate, stopped in traffic, reading a newspaper. It was spread out over the steering wheel. Is that legal? I mean, he wasn't, to be fair, he wasn't moving, the bus wasn't going anywhere. He was in traffic, he wasn't going anywhere. I don't know, maybe you know. I took a picture of it, I didn't tweet it, I don't want to get anyone sacked. But it got me thinking though, what is the craziest thing you've seen someone do at the wheel? Now maybe in traffic, or maybe on the open road. What's your story? What have you seen? Give me a call. 01904 641 641. Or you can text on 81333. Start your message with your... At the heart of North Yorkshire. Graham Mack. BBC Radio York. It was my first day here at BBC Radio York yesterday. I made the mistake. As soon as I got to York, I texted my wife to say, uh, I've made it to York. I love you. It was later in the day that I realised I'd sent that text not to my wife, but to the boss of BBC Radio York. And I ended up sitting next to her in the office and looking at my phone and realising what I did. So I had to sheepishly lean over and say, look, I think I've sent you a text by mistake. So I'd like to know when you've done this, when you sent a message to the wrong person. And uh, thanks for all your responses. You've been calling them through, you've been texting them and you've been putting them on Twitter. Red to blue on Twitter. Hi, how are you? I sent this to my landscaper. I meant to send it to my husband and I sent, can't wait to see you tonight, my love. The landscaper replied, that'll be an extra 40 quid. <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen people doing when they're supposed to be at the wheel driving? Eddie is a taxi driver. He says, what I see all the time is women steering with their knee, with the makeup mirror in one hand and a brush in the other, putting on eyeshadow and blush and going up to 70 miles an hour. I beat my horn at them. Do you really? <laughs> All right, now we're starting, it's starting to sound a bit sexist, this, but remember, I did have a story of a Sue calling with a, a story of a bus driver who was clipping his nails when driving. So it's both sexes are guilty of the grooming. You know, I, I don't know, has anyone seen anybody shaving while they're driving? What have you seen uh, somebody doing when they're supposed to be driving? 01904 641 641 or you can text 81333 and start your message with York. I mean, if you're shaving when you're driving, come on, you know, you could cut yourself, couldn't you? You'd think how ridiculous you'd look with all those little bits of toilet paper stuck to your legs. <laughs> Hi to Sabrina, who is the chief cook and bottle washer at the pub that I'm staying at at the moment. I'm staying at a pub in Home Upon Spalding Moor. Reason being, I left North Yorkshire years ago. I went south for a job. And unfortunately, the job's gone south as well now. <laughs> so anyway, I'm staying in this great pub in Home Upon Spalding Moor. And I was talking to Sabrina over breakfast this morning. And she's telling me someone has stolen the used cooking oil from the back of the pub. It's been nicked overnight. And I'm thinking, who would steal used cooking oil? Is someone running, I don't know, some kind of fast food van frying stuff using used cooking oil? Or is this, yeah, I've heard of this, you can run diesel cars? on cooking oil? Is it being stolen and used for fuel? Because she says it's not the first time it's happened. 
So there's something gone on there. If you can help me out and, and tell me why this is such a prized thing, give me a call. Why would you nick used cooking oil? At the heart of North Yorkshire. The News Hour with Graham Mack. BBC Radio York. Thousands of pounds in cash has been found in a bin bag on a vicarage doorstep in York. David Kenworthy is the former Chief Constable of North Yorkshire Police. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Graham. How easy is it going to be for the police to trace where this money came from? Cool. Well, there are several issues, really. I mean, is this money stolen, or is it abandoned, or is it just plain lost? Um, you know, or donation. Um, if it's stolen, well, with luck, the notes might have been marked, uh, or somebody will know the serial number of the notes. Of course, that's pretty unlikely if they're all used notes. Um, so trying to trace it is going to be very difficult. I mean, they'll look through and they'll, they'll circulate details to see if there have been any robberies of the uh, involving that amount of money locally. Um, and then uh, if they can't tie that up, uh, then one has to assume that it's probably either a donation or it's been abandoned or just plain lost. But it seems unreasonable that somebody would just lose several thousand pounds. OK, well, what happens if it turns out that the money was the proceeds of crime? Uh, well, then it, uh, it obviously, the first person who's got uh, caught on it is the original owner, and uh, they would get the money back. And if there was a dispute about it, then it gets um, sorted out in court. But uh, if, it's, if it's crime, then it's usually straightforward that it'll go back to the owner. But what if it was the proceeds of crime, if you know what I mean? The money's not necessarily owned. Oh, I see. But it's you because, mean, it's, the, yeah, it's yeah. just for, for, you know, selling stolen goods. Well, if it's selling stolen goods, then again, the dispute gets uh, sorted out in court. But generally speaking, the, uh, the owner of the original property would have the first call on it. What if no one claims it? Well, in theory, the, um, the finder can claim it, uh, I think in six weeks it is, if you've uh, handed it in to the police. Um, if it's just lost property, then you claim it in six weeks. So the law of finders, keepers, losers, weepers does apply? Well, not really. Um, it only applies if you've taken reasonable steps to find the owner, and of course by handing it in to the police. Uh, generally speaking, that would uh, cover it. But if you find something and you don't take reasonable steps, then actually it could be theft. So I suppose that the answer is you've just got to think to yourself, what, am, I, am I doing the right thing here? Would the, would the reasonable person think that I'm doing the right thing if they were, if they were questioned? Yeah. And, and by handing it the piece, you obviously have. Yeah, usually the way to tell whether you're doing the right thing or not is if you have to ask, yeah, then quite. you're not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So how common is this kind of thing then? Well, I don't think it's very common at all. I can't think of any incident like this. I mean, you know, usually, um, unfortunately, it's abandoned babies or things like that, but abandoned money is just very rare. And so there's certainly several thousand pounds, if that's what it is. Um, it, it could be somebody just wants to make a donation to the church, or goodness knows, I mean, it could be any re number of reasons for it. Um, but, of course, it, I suspect that there's going to be a little bit of um, question between the finder, with, who sounds as if they've got nothing to do with the church, and the church on, on the door, on, whose doorstep it was found on. So there's probably going to be a bit of a debate there as to who's going to claim the money after if it's not claimed by somebody else. David Kenworthy, former Chief Constable of North Yorkshire Police. Thank you very much for that. Jim in Hunmanby. Oh, hello, Graham. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Why is there a trade in used cooking oil? Well, funny enough, a friend of mine picked me up a few weeks ago to go somewhere and... Uh, he was telling me about various things on the journey, and on the way home he mentioned that he was running his car on, on cooking oil, and of course I bust out laughing, I said, God, it's stupid, you know. But when he dropped me off, he said, just go around the back end, near the exhaust, and he'll smell it, and sure as eggs I could. You could smell cooking oil? Yeah, and I don't know whether it was an absolute mixture, or whether he was running it as pure used cooking oil, but he was certainly running the car on it. Because I don't think you're allowed, you know, because you, you're avoiding uh, excise duty there on the fuel. Uh, Don't tell me who it was. No. I'm right. So you think that this cooking oil was pinched from this pub? You think so it could be it could run a vehicle on it, maybe? Well, if it's possible to run a vehicle on it, I think it's a strong possibility. I couldn't run mine on it. I'd be like, do you fancy some chips? <laughs> I always fancy some chips. I just fancy some chips right now. <laughs> Terry says he saw a bloke who actually had a paperback book taped to his steering wheel. Seriously? 
Dave says, one time on the M1, I saw a woman get changed from a very nice business outfit into a leotard. At one point, she was just sitting there in her underwear. Really? And Dave, you're saying she wasn't concentrating on the driving? At the heart of North Yorkshire. Graham Mack. BBC Radio York.